Hey, welcome to the Bridge Connection. Uh, we're going to be in Psalm 87 today. It's a short psalm, um, but there's some, some important truths in this psalm. Let's stop and, and pray before we start today, would you? I, I need it, and I, I know that all of us uh, need it, I'm sure. And it's not a matter of needing, it's just a matter of obedience to to sit before him and let our needs be made known unto him, to worship him, to honor him. What a privilege it is for us to be able to gather together five days a week for a few minutes and connect in his word and talk about our glorious, gracious, loving Savior and his Father and the Holy Spirit who lives within us. and Just a glorious time. So let's pray and thank him for that. Father, as we sit before you today in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus that looking at us and looking in this world and knowing where it was going and how how bad and rebellious we were, you still loved us so much, more than I can comprehend, that you ask your son to come and die in our place because the only way to know you was to have our sins forgiven and the only way to have our sins forgiven was them to be washed by blood and his was the only pure blood if he would come and take our place. So he did. So Jesus, we thank you for coming and dying in our place and crying out to your father on that cross, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they're doing. And Lord, you invited us into your family, Jesus, and we love you and thank you for the love that you have revealed to us and the grace and mercy that you constantly give to each one of us, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would teach us today the things that we need to know. You are the teacher. You lead us into all truth. You remind us of the things that Jesus said. We ask that you would remove the scales from our eyes and the plugs from our ears and the hardness in our hearts and all of the stuff that we just get hit with living in this world, Lord. So we surrender to you and ask that you would have your way today. As we open your word, your letter to us, and we read what you would want us to know this day. And we thank you in your name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Okay, we're in Psalm 87. 87 is a basically a, a celebration of, of Zion, of Jerusalem, the, the city of God, as the special object of his love and the royal city of his kingdom. And for some reason, he just, he, he, he loves this city and he's, this it's eternity. He's gonna rule and reign from this city. As a holy city, it represents all that is holy, all that is good in the working of God among his people. Further, it looks ahead prophetically to the ingathering of the nations into Jerusalem as the reigning city of the world in the coming messianic kingdom. Wow, is that going to be great? Israel will remain the chosen nation of God as the nations of the world will come to Zion to worship him. Wow, what a time that's going to be. So look forward to the culmination of all this prophecy and what he's promised us. As the title indicates, this psalm was written by the sons of Korah, that's uh, Le the Levitical choir made up of the descendants of Korah, Korah as we've talked about before. Let's pick up to verse one. His foundation is in the holy mountains. So declaring God to be the builder of Jerusalem, the psalmist now declares he has set his foundation on the holy mountain. The Lord himself, get this, has laid the very foundation of Zion. This God-founded city is located in the hill country of, of Judea, set upon the holy mountain, Mount Zion. And because it's holy, it's immovable, set apart into God's incredible purposes. Notice mountains in the plural, so it's kind of underscoring its stability as, as being uh, uh, majestic and, and beautiful. Verse two, the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Jacob, that represents Israel. Consequently, so what 
The, the Lord loves the gates of Zion as his most cherished city. He chose Zion to be his dwelling place, a city where his glory would be especially displayed. The gates refers to activity of the people there. They're, they're coming to, to worship God and, and uh, then departing to serve him. They honor him and they go out and serve him. He loves Zion more than all the other dwellings of Israel. This city is the God-chosen place to be his, his place of dwelling, place of worship on earth. Verse three, glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God, Selah, Selah, pause and think about it and, and just dwell on this for a moment, he says. You know, that's what Selah means, just pause and stop. Don't hurry through that. Glorious things are spoken, spoken of you, O city of God. So think about that and think about what he said in the, in the first two verses. His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of, of Israel. And glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Dwell on that, pause. So he's saying, in response to these truths, in response of all of these things, glorious things are, are said of you. So the people spoke highly of the city of God for one reason, because it was God's city, <laughs> and and it was the place where where God had had met His chosen people in intimate, awesome worship, and and uh, during many feasts and and uh, celebration times and rebuilding times and building times and war times and defeat times and victory times and all of these things. But it was always such an awesome, awesome time. Time after time, they would be restored and they would worship God in this holy city. And if you've never been there, boy, if you ever get a chance, you ought to do it. You ought to do that. And we're all going to show up there one day. Okay, no doubt about it. We're going to be there. But uh, if you want to be there in this lifetime, you, you need to plan a trip or, or, or go with the group. And we're going to give you some information on that later. Some friends of mine will be going. And... Uh, I'd love to see us go, go with their church. So we'll let you know about that in, in a bit. I want to make sure it's totally open before, before we go and so forth. Now look at verse four. Well, this is God speaking, all right? I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to those who know me. Behold of Felicia and Tyre with Ethiopia. With Ethiopia. This one was born there. So like I said, God is now the, the speaker, he's talking and he's saying, I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me. Now, Rahab symbolized both Egypt and Tyre, powerful city state to the north, along with Cush. And that's a, a reference in, well, in fact, the Cush is, is in, the, in the King James, but in the New King James here, it's not, I was saying the King James, I was putting this together a little bit. Uh, but along with Cush, and that's a reference to Ethiopia. Uh, that's a far distant nation uh, off to the south. And all of these foreign places will say, this one was born in Zion. In the future day of blessing, every nation of the world will come to Jerusalem to worship God. And we'll all there bear children. The emphasis is upon the global scope of the praise to be offered to God. And I, I, I begin to think about it and just well up, you know. There was a near fulfillment of this, I think, uh, on the day of Pentecost over in Acts uh, chapter 2, when worshipers came to Jerusalem from all around the, the known world. And boy, did they worship on that day of Pentecost. But I really believe now it looks ahead to the millennial kingdom where Gentiles and Jews alike We'll worship together the Lord in, in Israel in the holy city. You might want to um, pick up your Bibles and uh, maybe later read a little bit of Romans 11. We'll talk about that, all right? Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter two we'll talk about the day of Pentecost. That's an interesting thing to, to read as often as you can because it really uh, talks about an experience that we can all 
take part of and, and enjoy in our own lives. Verse five, and of Zion it will be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself shall establish her. The Lord will record, verse six, when he registers the peoples, this one was born there, Selah. So what, what's he saying there? Um, well, there's going to be many, many, many Gentile worshipers that are going to come to, to Jerusalem and be born there. And various, various people um, will, you know, he's, well, various people are saying, you know, this one and, and that one will be born there, you know, as their parents come to worship God. In the process, the Most High Himself will establish her, making her glorious as the epicenter of, of all worship. The Lord will write in the register of the peoples, this one was born in Zion. <laughs> Jerusalem is so loved by God, verse 2 because glorious praise will be given him there, verse three, remember? To be born in Jerusalem, therefore, will be considered a very, very, very special honor. Verse seven. Both the singers and the players on instruments will say, all my springs are in you. So as they make music, these worshipers who come to Jerusalem will, will sing to the Lord. They will declare to Zion, all my fountains, all my springs are in you. That is all their spiritual blessings, all of the, the stuff they've gotten, all of the refreshing, all of that has, has come to them you know, from Jerusalem where, where God is honored and, and uh, it will manifest his glory. Fountains or springs pictures the source of just divine blessings from God. You know, I, 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 when I think of that, I, as growing up, I remember we used to go to a place called the Springs of, of Living Water. It was somewhere up in the mountains. I would go with my family and I don't even remember what it was about. I was young, but I was just when I heard the springs of water. Oh, that sounds good, man. And it was a spiritual retreat, and, and I loved it. Just even as a, as a child, it was, it was so much fun to, to be there, you know, um, and just receive what, what, he, what, what he had. Even as a child, there just seemed to be something about the flow of his blessings. And I love it while we, while we worship or, you know, while we're listening to the word, there's times that his blessings just flow, you know, in, into our lives. It's not, it's not feelings, but it's just a special understanding. Some, sometimes it is feelings, but most of the time it's just understanding that God's life is uh, just flowing into us. Man. Listen to verse seven. <laughs> you know, I, I just think that the Lord will have great pleasure by those who seek him at Jerusalem. No doubt about it. Look at verse seven. Again, both the singers and the players on instruments say, and my springs are in you. To this present hour, Jerusalem remains, it's never changed, remains the apple of God's eye. The city in which he, he promised to display his unique glory and display it in such a way that we would honor him. It was in the holy city, Jerusalem. Think about it, that Jesus died for our sins, became the offering under the law and a curse under the law for you and me as sinners. It was in this city that Jesus rose from the dead, defeating the grave and death. It was from the Mount of Olives that Jerusalem at Jerusalem that, that Jesus ascended back to his Father in heaven. It was to Jerusalem that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. It was in Jerusalem that Jesus Christ built the first church. It will be in Jerusalem that Jesus shall return at the end of this age, and it will be in Jerusalem that Jesus Christ will rule and reign over the earth 
for a thousand years. Boy, am I looking forward to that. I listen to the television and I listen to these learned men speak. And I go, what did you just say? What decision did you just make? What planet are you living on? It's not right. And I look at that and they have no idea. This is the answer. We're going to rule and reign. And this is going to be the answer. And we got to get rid of this. We'll do this. Everything will be wonderful. Just speak a certain way. Do a certain thing. And Jesus is going to set up a thousand year reign where he reigns out of, out of, out of Jerusalem, out of Zion for a thousand years. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that. We'll be there. Be with him in that thousand years. After that thousand years, he's going to, you know, create a new heaven and a new earth. And don't know a lot about what that's going to be. A little bit, un, you know, he tells us, but it's just, I, I'm just happy he's going to do it. It's gonna, can you imagine what he can create uh, in all these thousands of years? And when he creates after the millennium, wow. We've only seen just a speck of what he can do. And I'm looking forward to the new, the new Jerusalem. How special Zion is to God. How special Jerusalem is to God. So it should be to all of us who, who love him as well. We should be on our knees. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And it's important because it's so special to God. And if you're not, not praying for the peace of Jerusalem and protection of Jerusalem, maybe, maybe this is just a reminder. No condemnation. Let's just start, you know. We'll pray for them in just a moment. But I just believe that's something that we need to do because we're told to do that. And he loves Jerusalem so much. And we're going to be there for a long period of time. And it's just going to be so wonderful. And God loves that city so much. You know, I, I worry about sometimes... Our nation at times backing off from Jerusalem and not making right choices and decisions to to be part of what they're doing and to support them. And that's a little, little frightening to me because they are truly the apple of God's eye. And we need to be on God's side always, you know. Let's pray, shall we? Father, as we come to you this day, we thank you for just loving us. Thank you for all the things that have happened at Jerusalem. Good stuff. There's been some tragedies and bad stuff, you know, but it's, it's, there's a day coming when it's going to be perfect. It's going to be some events there during the tribulation. Lord, and I believe the way that I read the end times, that we're not going to be here in your church. We're going to be already raptured, enjoying your marriage supper, Lord. There's going to be some events that happen in, right in Jerusalem and in the temple, Lord. So it's not done yet. But we want to learn how to pray for your city. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And if you love this city so much, Lord, we need to also. So we take this moment. We ask that you would remind us <coughs> every day to just say a prayer. Just a quick thing maybe just for your city, for the safety, for the protection of, for the peace. You ask us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. And we want to do that. So we ask that you would remind each one of us this thing right now, praying right now. Lord, we ask you to remind us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we do that right now, Lord. Pray for peace. Pray for protection. Cover them, sweet Savior, with your precious blood. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.